By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at a classic battle in Magic the Gathering, white versus black. I am playing white, a completely foreign black bordered deck. It's been a, it's been a project. The deck is kind of finished and I'm going to play it against my opponent, Yoop, today. And he's playing with his Nettling Imp deck. Exactly. I said that his Nettling Imp mono black deck that he's called I'm perfect, imp perfect, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm looking forward to show you the deck pictures. Before I do that, though, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the games. And as for now, I'm going to continue with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Yoop. Let's take a look at his Nettling Imp Brew. And here we see the deck of my opponent. So it's called Imp Perfect, right? I'm perfect, but then referring to Nettling Imp. Why? Because there are four Nettling Imps in this deck. Look at the center of the deck picture. It's beautiful. You've got an Alpha Nettling Imp, a Beta One, Unlimited, and a Summer Magic copy. It is absolutely stunning. And Nettling Imp is a card you don't see that often anymore, but it's actually quite good in combination with a lot of other cards that are almost all in this deck. Maybe let's first focus on what Nettling Imp does. So it's one black and two for a Summon Imp 1-1 one, one with a lot of text on it. So you can tap it, and I'm just gonna read the current errata. It says, choose target non wall creature the active player has controlled continuously since the beginning of the turn. So it cannot be a creature with summoning sickness. That creature attacks this turn if able. Then destroy it at the beginning of the next end step if it didn't attack this turn. Activate only during an opponent's turn before attackers are declared. Now, the fact that the creature dies if it didn't attack means that you can use it in combination with the Icy Manipulator that you also see in this deck. You force the opponent to attack, but before combat you tap it down with the Icy, then it cannot attack and therefore it is destroyed at the beginning of the next end step. Right, so that actually works. Another nice combo here is, that's my favorite actually in the deck, is use Nettling Imp on a smaller creature of your opponent. Remember, I'm playing White Weenie, I've got tons of small stuff, and uh, force it to attack and then gobble it up with the Sangir Vampire. Sangir Vampire gets a plus one, plus one counter if a creature that it dealt damage to dies the, uh, that turn. So you can kill creatures and then actually get a pretty big Sengir Vampire. So Sengir Vampire Nettling Imp was a combination you used to see quite a lot. Now, it also works really nice with Sorcerer's Queen. Sorcerer's Queen is a 1-1 one -one that can make any target creature into an 0-2. So again, you can use your Nettling Imp, force me to attack with my bigger creature, maybe if I have a Sarah Angel, change it into an 0-2 creature, and again, gobble it up with your Sengir or simply just kill it with your Hypnotic Spectre. Now Nettling Imp and Royal, that's again another combo that works together quite well because if you force a creature to attack, most creatures in old school, they have to tap to do it. There's not a lot of vigilance in the format, so that means the creature's gonna get tapped and then you kill it with the Royal. So Nettling Imp is just really, really good in this deck. And by just discussing Nettling Imp and all the Nettling Imp synergies, I think we've almost discussed the entire deck of my opponent. He does play with some other quite good utility cards. You know, Sinkhole is just really good. I like the Dark Ritual, so he can just ritual out an early hippie or a Sengir Vampire or maybe a Nettling Imp turn one. That would be kind of funny. Uh, then, of course, he's playing with the usual suspects, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. He's also playing with one Juzam Jin, which is pretty cool. And he's playing with a Nightmare. Um, and he's also playing with, oh, it's a 5-5, five five. It, it, you can tap it to destroy lands. Oh, I forgot the name, but you know what I mean. It's there in the left bottom corner. It's super cool. Uh, it, it taps to destroy target lands, uh, but you got to pay three black during your upkeep to do so. And if you cannot pay the three black, it taps itself. And uh, Demonic Hordes, that's the name. Uh, it taps itself, and then you have to, uh, then your opponent can destroy a land that you own. So it's like tables turned. You know, demonic hordes, they need to eat lands. Now, the cool thing is, under the current rules, you can first untap it. Then in your upkeep, if you don't pay the three black, it taps itself. In response to that, you can tap the hordes, and you can still uh, destroy a land on the side of your opponent. Now, I think in this matchup, all that land destruction is not going to be great because I'm one of those horrible white weenie players that plays with four land tags. So, I mean, it's going to be tough, Yoop, to kind of use your 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 demonic hordes and, and your sinkhole against me. Maybe you don't even want to do that. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of my opponent. It's, it's looking pretty good. Now, let's take a look at my foreign black-bordered white brew. Let's have a look. 
And here we see my deck that I've called Magia Bianca, which means white magic in Italian. And of course that refers to the fact that it's a completely white deck, right? And I wanted to make this completely foreign black bordered. I guess I still want to make it completely Italian. It's not completely Italian yet. It's more like a European deck, I guess. We've got French cards, we've got Spanish cards, we've got Italian cards. Uh, we got some German cards in there as well. So it's kind of a mix, but I really love the look. I mean, look at it. I mean, it just looks great. It gives me a good feeling. You know, everything's foreign black bordered. It's a pretty standard white weenie deck, I guess. I've made a few, you know, different decisions, but the core idea of the deck is you just play out a lot of weenie smaller creatures like Savannah Line, Tundra Wolves, Mesa Pegasus. There's a Thunder Spirits in here. There are also White Knights in here that are going to be really, really good in this matchup. Um, and then, of course, I want to play a land tax. And after that, I want to play an Armageddon, wipe the boards of lands. Then my land tax is going to be activated because my opponent has to, to play out lands because I've got so much pressure on the board with all my little weenie creatures. Then I get to draw even more lands. And because I'm filtering out my deck out of all the lands that I don't really need anyway, I keep drawing into creatures or, of course, into creature solutions like Swords to Plowshares, Disenchants, that kind of stuff. Right, so that's what I want to do. Now, there are some, I guess, a few interesting choices in this deck that you don't see a lot in white weenie decks, and hopefully I get to show their power in this matchup. I'm, I've decided to play with the Witch Hunter. Witch Hunter, I think, can be quite good because I can send a creature uh, back with Witch Hunter on, for example, the end step of my opponent. I can bounce that creature. Then when it's my turn again, I can play Armageddon, and he doesn't have the mana anymore to recast a creature. That's kind of the idea behind the Witch Hunter, and the Witch Hunter can, of course, always ping my opponent for one. So it's kind of like direct damage in white, which is quite difficult. Talking about direct damage, that's also why I for an eye is in there. So I for an eye means I take the damage, but then I play I for an eye, and my opponent also takes that damage, right? So if my opponent attacks or plays just a big fireball or something, I can use I for an eye. Now, the problem, of course, with I for an eye is that I do take the damage first, so I will need to survive, but I'm just hoping to use it like on like a big attack, but not on the alpha strike that's gonna kill me, basically. But we'll just have to see how that works. Uh, then I'm also playing with Kismet, which is an enchantment from Legends, and I, th I think it's a bit underplayed. It is quite costly to put on the board though, one white and three for this enchantment from Legends, and it reads, your opponent's lands, artifacts, and creatures come into play tap. Now, I think that's just gonna be super annoying for my opponent, because, you know, especially after an Armageddon, you're gonna play it, your land comes in tapped. So it's really gonna slow you down. And also the creatures are gonna come into play tapped. So that means that, you know, my weenie creatures can just keep attacking for an extra turn. That extra turn can make all the difference. So again, I'm kind of looking forward to try to use these, these cards in a deck, because you just don't see them often in a white weenie build, so I'm just curious to see how they will perform, and maybe it's just better to put Sarah Angels in there. That's probably going to be the answer, but I just want to see how they work, and I, I guess this is a nice match to try it out. Anyway, we've looked at my deck, we looked at the deck of my opponent, Jupe, that means we're ready. Let's go to the match. White versus black. Who's going to win? Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the right on the play with my white weenie deck, starting here with a Savannah Alliance. I'm taking on Yoop with his mono black deck. Let's see what he can do. There is a Will o' the Wisp. So it's an 0-1 flyer for one black and you can regenerate it for one black. So for now I can still attack, tapping another white, playing a land tax and an, and an attack. So I'm probably not gonna play out another land, hoping that my opponent will activate the land tax. Of course, he does have Dark Rituals as well, and he's just passing the turn. Look at that. So he's just going to wait and see. I'm going to attack. He's probably going to block and regenerate here. Exactly. Going to regenerate there, tapping the Willow and playing a Banalish Hero and a pass. So this is what usually happens, right, with the land decks on the board. You're kind of going to hold your breath, and hopefully my opponent will start to play out lands first. In a way, I'm kind of forcing him by playing out this other uh, threat here on the board, the Banala Shiro. Look at that playing a Mishra's Factory. That means I've got an activation now, but of course the factory is pretty good against me. Remember, it still has Summoning Sickness for now, so I'm first going to pick up the lands with my land text, going to shuffle up. And that Mishra's Factory is also really good against, for example, my White Knight. But it is risky... Also for my opponent, because I am playing with Disenchants and with Swords to Plowshares, so I do have some answers. Attacking with both here. I think he's just going to block the Willow and take one.
Let's see what he's going to do. Yeah, so he's just going to... Or is he going to animate? Oh, he is animating the factory, taking the risk here. Now I've got a disenchant. Taking care of it, and that means he's going to take three points of damage. And he's dropping to 15. There's another swamp passing the turn, so I don't have a land tax activation now. And that's, of course, kind of difficult when you're disenchanting the factory because, I mean, in a way, you want your opponent to have more lands than you, so this is not really helping. Look at that playing another planes, actually. So he's going to take a damage here from the Banalish, Benil uh, going to drop to 14, and there's a Thunder Spirit, so I'm thinking that I probably have an Armageddon in hand to play next turn. That is what I think is going to happen. And Yoop just playing a land and passing the turn. I'm expecting Armageddon here. There we go, Armageddon. So with this deck, I really made the decision to go with four Armageddon and four land techs because I just always want to have attacks in Armageddon. And they're attacking with everything. So that's actually a lot of damage. Five points. My opponent here dropping to nine. It's looking very bad here for Yoop. Look at that. Only one Willow on the board. Hopefully he's got a, a Swamp so he can at least block the Thunder Spirit next turn. Or the Lion. Doesn't really matter, but it does mean that he'll take two le less points of damage. There's the Swamp. And now he can activate the tax. And this is exactly the type of game that I want to play with this deck. So I'm really drawing what, what I want to draw. You know, turn one Lions. And then the uh, the land tax, I believe, in turn two. There's the attack here. Five points of damage. You can block only one with the Willow. Taking three, going to drop to six. Playing a Plains and another threat. There's the Tundra Wolves and passing the turn. So Tundra Wolves, a 1-1 first striker from Legends. I'm also playing with Pikeman, which I love uh, because Pikeman is first strike and banning. So if you can ban Pikeman with another first strike creature, it's really cool. For example, with the Thunder Spirit, you got like a 3-3 first striker in a band, which is pretty strong. Shuffling up again. Picking up planes again and this is the type of pressure that I talked about if you've got your opponent under pressure and you're winning the game you're kind of forcing him to play out the lands and, and activating the tax blocking another one is he dead yet no he's still on two taking four points of damage after blocking the thunder spirit tapping two white here playing even more creatures so I'm just really clocking up the board trying to play as many creatures as possible I know that my opponent doesn't have balance for example so I'm not afraid to really commit to the board here there we see a sinkhole on the planes. Doesn't matter much. It's kind of over already, but I am going to, of course, untap and finish it. Just going to draw for turn, not using my tax because I have one already anyway. So winning a game number one here. And uh, that went really, really well. I would love my deck to perform like this every single time. Anyway, we're going to shuffle up and uh, we're going to continue with game number two. Game number two, here we go. It's my opponent here on the play. He's taking a mulligan, starting with a swamp. Dark ritual, let's see what he can do. Are we gonna see a hippie? Soul ring, two black floating still, tapping. Oh, Juzan Jin, turn one, insane. Ho oh, ho, that is so sweet. Juzan Jin, do I have a swords to plowshares? That would be horrible for you, but I do love the fact that he's going for it. I love it, man. I mean, if I don't have it, he can start bashing me, you know? Tapping. What do I have? Savannah Lines. I don't have a Swords. Passing the turn. Also no Land Tax, by the way. Attacking here. Probably just going to take the damage for now. 15. I can at least attack him back for two if he doesn't play anything. Oh, there's a Mind Twist for two. He is missing a land drop though, so I, I guess I'm kind of lucky here. Or else he could have done a mind twist for three, but a mind twist for two. Oh man. Let's see what cards he's going to pick. I'm going to throw the dice. Card number two is gone. That's a witch hunter. And card number six is gone. That is a Pegasus, so the 1-1 one, one flyer. It's not. I mean, the Pegasus would be a good chum blocker, but it's not too bad. Give me a Swords. There's another Plains. There's a Swords to Plowshares. Ooh, playing it. I'm not sure if I should play this um, in my own turn, by the way, because I can first wait until Yoop takes a point of damage. Anyway, he gains five life, going to lose two. 
So it's going to go up three points. Unfortunate for you, Pierre, but it was to be expected, of course, that at a certain point it would start drawing into the uh, sorts to plowshares. Can he find lands, though? Okay, that's good news for him. Finding a land drop, tapping four. And there's a Hypnotic Spectre. So we're playing according to the Swedish rules with uh, an open reprint policy. That means there's no mana burn. Attacking for two here. And there's another Lions passing the turn. And of course, this is pretty good for Yoop. You know, he can attack. He can take a card out of my hand or not. Finding another Swords. Very lucky here with the Swords to Plowshares. There's a Royal Assassin. Last card in hand, though. But it's a good one. It's a Royal. This is going to be tough. I've already played out two Swords to Plowshares. Let's see what else I can do. There's a Pikeman. The question I was, do I want to attack in the next turn he can kill one of my lines? No, I don't. I just want to wait until... Ooh, Nettling Imp! This is, this is horrible for me. He can force my creatures to attack, then I've got to tap them, and he can kill them with Royal. Nettling Imp, Royal Assassin, that is a really sweet old-school combo here on the board for my opponent, Joop. This is what he wants to do. It's really cool to see the Nettling Imp in action in this match. And now he, pa he passes the turn, and my upkeep is going to say, I want you to attack... And I'm just uh, choosing to attack with everything, trying to inflict some points of damage. I'm not sure if this is the right decision, because now, of course, my opponent can untap here, disenchanting the uh, Soul Ring, by the way. But now Yoop can untap and kill another creature with the Royal. I mean, I, I have to do what I have to do, right? And what is so nice here for my opponent is that... Um, you know, I had to use the Swords to Plowshares on the Hypnotic Spectre and on the Jews M. Jin, and that meant that I didn't have any removal left to kind of deal with the uh, the Royal Assassins. Attacking here with the uh, Pikeman. Now, of course, the one Royal has Summoning Sickness, so I'm going to deal a damage, but next turn, of course, my creature is going to die to one of the two Royals. The Royal's really doing work here with the Netling Imp. And it's really nice because in game one, we kind of saw my white deck do what it wants to do. And now in game number two, we're seeing Yoop's deck doing what it wants to do, playing the game with the Netling Imp and the Royal Assassin, which is perfect. So attacking me for one, you're passing the turn. I'm on 14 at the moment. Going to tap to... Oh, a balance! Wow, this balance is really good. Only two cards in hand for Yoop. Three cards in hand for me, so I'm going to lose a card. We got an equal amount of lands, but of course, Yoop is going to lose all his creatures. And uh, he is... Oh, that's smart. He's playing out a Dark Ritual, forcing me to discard two more cards. And I'm discarding an Armageddon, and is that also an Armageddon? So double Armageddon, keeping one card in hand, a Benalish Hero playing out the Hero, passing the turn. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. Ooh, this is quite good. Let's hope for me that it's just a creature that I can play out. Playing out of swords here. Okay, finding swords to plowshares number three. I'm really finding those swords here. Does mean that my opponent goes up one life in total after that attack of the hero. So he's on 19. I'm on 14. We're both in top decking mode, but I've got a 1-1 one, one creature. So I'm a little bit in favor here attacking with the Banalish. Putting Yoop here on 18. But this, I mean, this is going to take a long time. I'm sure he's going to find something useful in between. Five mana. Doesn't have a Sengir. Lucky that he doesn't. Putting him here on 17. Can I play another creature? Two cards in hand. Passing the turn, though. My opponent also passing the turn. So both kind of top decking here. Playing land number four. Attacking him here. Putting him on 16. Also no land text for me. A land text would be quite nice to kind of filter out the lands. There's a... Icy Manipulator. I probably have a Disenchant in hand, right? I guess I don't, or else I would have done that on end step. So I want to attack. He's tapping down the Benelish. So I'm on 14. Yoop's on 16. There, I'm playing a White Knight. Now this White Knight is quite good in this matchup, of course. But the Icy is a good answer because it can target the White Knight. Attacking here, stepping down the knight, of course, still dealing one damage with the Banalish. The Banalish, it's doing some work. It's nice to see that passing the turn. I mean, at a certain point, 
you has to find maybe one of his bigger creatures. Remember, he's playing with a nightmare. He's playing with uh, oh, the Juzam Jin. We already saw that, but he's also playing with the demonic hordes. And now I'm finding a land text that is really good news for me. Not because I need the lands, but I'm filtering out the lands from my deck, meaning I'm probably going to find more useful spells, perhaps a disenchant on the um, on the icy manipulator. So now I'm going to untap, activate my tax. And the game is kind of turning after that balance for the simple reason that Yoop cannot really find the cards that he needs to put pressure on me. Like if he could have found like a Sengir Vampire, that would make all the difference. And of course, I was lucky finding that Swords to Plowshares to take care of that Hypnotic Spectre. Tapping down again the White Knight. And I'm not attacking with the hero because of the Mishra's Factory on the side of my opponent. There is a book. Okay, that can actually make all the difference. That is a really good card here for my opponent. He's got six swamps, by the way, six lands. I've got five lands, so I can look up uh, land text again next turn. Actually, he's got seven because he also has the factory. So again, having my tax activation. Drawing a card for turn. Hopefully it's a disenchant. I could disenchant... It's interesting, like, what to pick. I guess I got to pick the book. I think the book is a bigger threat at the moment. Discarding a planes, and am I just passing the turn? It looks like I'm just passing, though. Tapping down the White Knight. There we see a Dark Ritual to draw a card. That makes sense. I get this play doing it on my end step. I mean, he wants to find, like, if he can find the Demonic Hordes or even better, the, the Nightmare, it's going to be really bad for me. Remember, I've already played three Swords to Plowshares. This is also pretty good, actually. The Hypnotic Spectre. And what I like about this is that he still has four mana open, so I wonder if he's going to tap down the White Knight. So looking up lands again, I wonder how many basics I still have. I mean, I am playing with a lot of just all, all my lands are basic planes. I believe I'm playing with 20 lands in total. I'm not playing with uh, with Mishra's Factories. I just want to take full advantage of the land decks. Okay, this is really good. A Thunder Spirit. Wow, that's a great answer to that Hypnotic Spectre. Thunder Spirit, a 2-2 creature with flying from Legends. And it also has First Strike. So that First Strike makes it really good against the uh, Hypnotic Spectre. And I wonder if Yoop can find, for example, a Sorcerer's Queen that would also be quite good. He's lost two Royal Assassins, of course, to that balance earlier in the game. That was kind of a blow for him. Tapping four black for an icy, another Icy Manipulator. Ooh, I mean, this is looking quite good for him. I'm already shuffling up my hand, but he's actually not attacking. What he what he could have done here, of course, was was tap down the uh, the Thunder Spirit and attack here. I was kind of expecting him to do that, but he's not doing it. He's very patient, and only time will tell if that's a mistake. And while I'm I'm drawing now, I'm really missing Sarah Angels, by the way, because now I've got a lot of mana. We're kind of in in you know we're in that mid game position, maybe even the late game already, where you really want to have a buff, a big beefy creature, and I don't really have that. So in that scenario, I'm really missing uh, the Sarah Angel. Look at that on my end step, uh, or actually, I'm saying I want to get go into combat. He's stepping down the White Knight and the Thunder Spirit. And there's a disenchant. Okay, what am I gonna do? Disenchanting the book here, interesting. Yeah, it's it's difficult here to make the right decision. I mean, yes, the book is going to give him card advantage, so you want to tackle the book. But on the other hand, he's got a hypnotic specter. Yeah. Then again, if I go for one ice, he still has got one left. It's it, it, this was a tough decision to make. Anyway, there's a Sengir vampire. Things are really looking good here for my opponent, Joop. And he's not attacking. Why is he not attacking? This is really puzzling. I really expected him to attack here. No planes anymore in the deck, so just shuffling my deck here. This is a big surprise. I mean, he should have attacked, right? There's a Pegasus. So I'm really kind of clogging up the board here. 
tapping down the White Knight again and the Thunder Spirit on my end step and passing the turn. So, I mean, he's got to attack, right? I mean, I've got cards in hand. He's still not attacking with the Hypnotic Spectre. That is, that is so interesting. Maybe I'm missing something here. I mean, he knows that I only have lands in hand, so I guess, you know, maybe that's the reason. But then still, I mean, it's two points of damage. Anyway, he did attack with the Sengir, though. I'm on 10. This is an interesting game, right? Because I'm just, you know, playing out all my creatures, probably trying to prepare for, like, an Alpha Strike. He's tapping down my White Knight, also tapping down my Thunder Spirit. He can attack now with two Sengirs and an Hypnotic Spectre for 10 damage in total. That would be super brutal. He is untapping now. At least I've got the um, the Mega Pegasus, the Mesa Pegasus, I should say. Oh, he's tapping that down as well. 10 points of damage. That's the end of the road, isn't it? Only Lance in hand. <laughs> I am dead. That's it. So... Wow, Th this was an interesting game because you started off really, really well, Yoop, and then there was a moment in the game where I thought I was taking over with the swords and after that uh, that balance play, but you came back uh, wonderful, and I think the Icy Manipulators, together with the book, they were a game changer in this game number two. Anyway, uh, you know, it's 1-1. This was a great game. I'm really looking forward to the final game in this matchup. Let's go to game number three. Game number three, it's 1-1. One, one. Here we go. I'm on the plate. That gives me a little advantage, right? Playing White Weenie, being aggressive. Look at that. Starting with a Banalis Shiro, turn one. And you, here starting with a Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. Classic opener. The big question here is, do I have a Swords to Plowshares? Playing a second White. There's the Swords. Taking care of business. Attacking for one as well. So he's going to go one up. That is the risk you take, of course, with that play, but I do understand it because if I don't have the swords, he can start discarding my hand, and that's super powerful. Playing out a second swamp here, and I'm attacking with the hero, putting Yoop on uh, on 20 again, playing out the Pegasus, the 1-1 one, one flyer with banding as well. And there we see a royal assassin finding its way on the board, and that's again a problem. Royal is really just, it, it stops my plan. I mean, it freezes me. I can no longer attack. Okay, there is a White Knight. That is really good because it's got protection from black, so it cannot be targeted by the Royals. So I can still attack with it and deal damage. Ooh, there's an answer, though, to the White Knight. And it's really good, of course, in combination with the Royal. I need a Disenchant here. Tapping two White. Okay, there's the Disenchant taking care of business. And now I can attack with the White Knight. Remember, it's got protection from black. He cannot target it. It's going to drop to 18. He does have some weapons against the White Knight, so Icy Manipulator is one. He's also playing with Mishra's Factories. They're quite good as well. Remember, a Mishra can pump itself, so it can block as a 3-3, and that would be enough to kill the um, the White Knight. There's a Netly Imp. Ooh, again, that's really good. I mean, he can start killing out my other creatures. So I can attack here. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank. Not sure if I want to, but I mean, it makes sense to me to just attack, turn it sideways. So four damage now already dealt by the White Knight. There is tapping. Okay, there's a Willow. What would be really good for you, Pierre, just like just to play a Sengir or something big? So that whenever I attack with the White Knight, he can respond by just, you know, attacking with a big creature, dealing more damage to me than I can do to him. And of course, a Mishra's Factory would be quite good. So now he's using his Natling Imp to force uh, me to attack with the creature. Probably the, the Flying 1-1, one -one, the Pegasus. Or is it the Banalish? I wonder what I'm going to do. Or just attacking here with the Pegasus and my 2-2 White Knights. He's going to kill, of course, the 1-1 Flyer. But he is taking two points of damage again. The problem for him here is the White Knight. Look at that, playing an Armageddon. And the only reason that Armageddon is good is it's because of that White Knight. 
and passing to turn here. So this could be devastating for Yupir, you know, because he needs his mana to play out, for example, the Icy that he can use to control the um, to control the White Knight. Forcing my Benalish here to attack. So I'm going to attack with both. Going to kill my Benalish, but he's going to take two again from the Knight. Eight points of damage already. This game is all about the White Knight. Playing out a Plains, passing to turn. There is a Swamp. Three cards in hand for me. There's an attack for two. That makes sense. Putting me on 18. I can put him on 10 now with the Knight. And the pass turn. So he's going to untap again. I mean, if he can find a factory, he is playing with four Mishra's factories. That would kind of solve the problem for him. Attacking here again. Putting him on 8. And passing the turn, so not finding any smaller creatures, at least that's something here for my opponent. There's a sinkhole, destroying one of the planes, attacking again for two, putting me on 14. Untapping the knight again, so is this knight just going to grant me the victory of the match here? Putting my opponent here on 6. There is a Dark Ritual, and that's a Sing Gear. That's actually pretty good. That is, I mean, he's got three turns. That's enough. He can actually win it on the Sing Gear alone. Tapping two here. Ooh, there's a balance, though. I guess he wants to keep the Sing Gear, right? That makes sense. Wow, this is actually a pretty close game because now he wants to keep the Sengir and he can... And he then just needs one more turn. He just doesn't have enough time, right? Because I'm now going to attack, put him on four. Then he's going to attack me, put me on eight. Then I'm going to attack him again. So I just, I, I'm one turn up. That is the story of this match. I'm going to go to eight. There's another sinkhole. Going to untap here. Putting him on two. Passing the turn. The attack is going to go to four. Oh, man. Does he have anything? No, he does not. I'm winning it here on the White Knight. And that feels kind of bad, to be honest, because we were playing without sideboards. And um, I actually told him beforehand that I was having White Knight's main in my deck. And this was like, you know what, let's just give it a try. I just want to play with my imps, it's cool. And I really liked uh, the white-black matchup. And uh, But here, this was actually a pretty close game. Yes, the white knight kind of dominated because he couldn't find an answer. I had that disenchant for the IC. But, I mean, he came really, really close with that Sengir Vampire. And then I played that balance. I mean, this, this was a close matchup. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Yoop, for bringing this deck to the table. And also for being a sport, you know, having to... To play against my white knights with your mono black deck i, I really really appreciate it and uh, i hope you enjoyed this match uh, let me know in the comments by the way what you think of netling imp is netling imp a card that you've played have you considered playing it uh how do you feel about the power level of the card i think it's a pretty cool card i think you can do quite a lot with it um and i really enjoyed playing against this deck where, where i could see four netling imps and we really got to see the card in action anyway uh this is the episode for today thank you very much for watching and before you go i would like to ask you to uh like share if you want to and uh, and comment all these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward and here we can see that beautiful imp deck by the way and before you go i would also like to ask you to subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet and hit that bell i should say ring that bell right anyway um i also have a patreon page so if you like the content that I make, please consider visiting patreon.com slash timmytalks and have a look at how you can become a sponsor of the show. It's actually quite simple and it already starts with just $1 a month. And with that money, I can keep the channel going. So please consider supporting Timmy Talks on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And one of the nice things is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.